Alright, here goes nothing. This MBT, a game published by GMT Games, just a few weeks back. And this is actually the first board game on this channel. So I hope you stay tuned and enjoy the Let's Play just as much as I do. Alright, welcome back to the MVT Let's Play. Uh, this is going to be very exciting for me. Uh, I never did a board game as a Let's Play. I barely did any Let's Plays and I know that my uh, recent Let's Plays have well, pretty much been experimental to me. So this is basically the next experiment uh, in a succession of many other experiments. Number one. The first remark that I would like to make is, I have never played uh, Panzer series games. I have not played MBT once, I have not played any other Panzer game. So this is not meant to be a tutorial series, uh, this is much more meant to be a learning experience for me. And I want to share this learning experience uh, with you. So if I do any mistakes, which I will definitely do, I basically just read the rules once, uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, also let me know if you like the whole idea. I know that most of you are probably looking for a Let's Play where someone's playing the game who's already proficient at the rules, which I'm definitely not. But I could have just as well uh, not recorded this game and, uh, well, put this whole experience to the archives if you want, so my personal archives, and never talk uh, about that with anyone uh, anytime. So instead, I just decided to share this as uh, as my first MBT game. I'm still waiting for the uh, German Armed Forces add-on, uh, the Bundeswehr add-on. I'm not quite sure if that's already shipping or printing. Not 100% positive on that. I had to wait for this copy also for quite a while since I'm not living in the US. I'm living in Europe. So uh, it took the retailer a bit longer um, than it would have taken the retailer in the US to ship the board game. What I'm trying to say is that when you watch this, uh, the game has definitely been shipped in the US a while back. To me, this is pretty much just um, out of the box and a very fresh uh, side to see. Let me think if there's anything else uh, regarding the Let's Play. Yeah, since it's my first board game that I'm recording, uh, I have a weird contraption going on for recording this. Um, the webcam that I'm using for this record is basically hooked into my kitchen lamp. Uh, that's my makeshift contraption that I'm using to, that I use to uh, record this whole session. On top of that, uh, when I'm recording this, I'm trying to record this in one go. I am often editing, at least now I'm often editing my uh, computer game Let's Plays, uh, the most recent episodes when I'm having a brain fart or when I'm not happy with the way I'm expressing myself, especially since I'm not a native speaker, but I think I can't do that uh, right now. I, I just, this whole thing, there's just way too much going on uh, for me to just hit the stop button on the recording again, uh, just to start all over, which I tend to do with other recordings. I don't have any plexiglass or any other a way of flattening the uh, the cardboard or the actual board that we're playing on. Uh, I am not in a position to, to have these luxuries uh, stockpiled here. Instead you will see the one, or other, I don't know if you see that from above, but instead you will see uh, these little well bumps in the cardboard. I was trying to uh, flatten this for a few days, but it didn't work out that well. I really just want to start uh, playing right away because I'm honestly yearning for some MBT gameplay. That's uh, pretty much it as to the, let's say, context that I'm recording this in. <clears throat> uh, what scenario are we playing? I mentioned already that we are playing uh, the second scenario, which is called First Clash Part 2, Czech Western Border, and it takes place on the 27th of uh, September in 1987. 
and just take a sip. So, 1987, that's when this uh, scenario set in. I personally love the episode, or love the time frame this game is set in. I think uh, Modern Warfare has gotten by far not enough love in wargaming, computer gaming in particular. Uh, I think the Assault series is a great board game, especially with the updated rules uh, that someone uh, created in a, in a great effort. Um, I love the engineering rules in Assault, but I don't want to talk too much about Assault. I would rather like to talk about this uh, this game, this uh, board game. <clears throat> uh, so I love the time frame this game is set in. Uh, but Having said that, I don't care too much about the historical or semi-fictional, fictional historical background. I don't care which divisions clash, I don't care what the names of the towns are, I don't care what the, let's say, whether we have the Czech Western border or the Austrian border, I absolutely don't care. Uh, what I do care about is the mechanics itself. I love generic wargaming, I love to have a Battalion A fighting against Regiment B, and I'm more than happy with that. And so in this case, in this scenario, we're looking at basically two reinforced tank companies. It's one of the first scenarios in the um, in MBT, and it's meant to be, let's say, a learning scenario, a beginner scenario. There's one scenario that is even more simple that only employs tanks, uh, basically just one tank company per player. Uh, but in this scenario, the uh, second scenario, the first clash part two, we already have available a few more units, mainly towed guns, uh, ATGMs, so anti-tank guided missiles, and dismounted units, infantry. So the second scenario is basically just the exact same as the first scenario, except that we have these additional units, which I think is a great idea. It really starts off with the first scenario that's very simple and gets increasingly difficult uh, in, in terms of rules and game mechanics over time if you choose to pick another scenario, another, let's say, more advanced scenario. I decided to go with the second one, first of all, because I rarely have, rarely have the time to play board games. Uh, I rarely have the space. And on top of that, I heard that the scenario one is sort of unbalanced. Uh, why we can talk about that in a second, but um, the additional units are hopefully sort of making up for that imbalance. I'm not too sure about that, but we will see. We will have a look. I'm not intending to um, make the greatest technical decisions. I'm intending to have a look at as many mechanics as I possibly can, I guess, in this game, and just see where the boundaries and limits are for the game systems and uh, create as many situations as possible for me to practice MBT. Uh, so we are ready for the next scenarios and maybe I can record a game that I'm playing against someone else at some point in time, I don't know. I would love to do that, I don't like solitaire playing that much, but I still want to share this uh, with you guys. On top, uh, since I already mentioned that I read the rules basically just once, um, there's a good chance that I'm looking at rules while we go. I might edit out some moments when I'm looking at the rules for too long, but bear with me if I'm looking up things. I've opened the uh, MBT rules, the PDF. No, I haven't. I will do that in a second. But I will open up the PDFs uh, that are online. I will also link them in the description, including the Bessel module and uh, the, the official GMT page for the game, I guess. So it's easier for you guys to follow what I'm doing. I will often talk about charts that I will not necessarily show in, into the camera or show to the camera. Uh, so it might be easier for you to download the Bessel module, to have a look at the playbook, to recreate the scenario that I'm playing right now and have a look at the charts uh, while I'm uh, talking about the charts that I'm having here in the printed edition. But I will try to make as many things clear as I possibly can. Now let's see, did I forget anything else? We were just talking about the scenario. I was trying to uh, introduce you to the scenario. So basically we have two reinforced companies, one Soviet and one uh, American company, US company. Uh, the US company, or basically both companies, are very, very similarly equipped. That's the whole idea of the scenario. Uh, we are basically pinned 
in an, or pitted against each other in a um, meeting engagement style scenario, which means in this case that we have, uh, I don't know if you can see that, I think you do, and we have this bridge over here as an objective, which I would call, let's say, village bridge, uh, this bridge over here, the center bridge, and then because I have trouble um, framing the whole board game on this side, now where my hand is leaving, um, we have another fort that is not worth as many victory points as the bridges, but that is also a victory point location. I will try and show you as much as I can um, when, when playing this. <clears throat> but now we are still talking about the, let's say, uh, outline of the whole scenario. And uh, what I need to mention in that, in that regard is that on the US side, we have a total of, let me count that, I think it was 15 M60 tanks. Yeah, 15 M60 tanks, M60A3 TTS to be precise. And on the Soviet side, we have 13, I think, uh, T72 AV tanks. Now, the thing is, and that's why the uh, first scenario is, I think, pretty imbalanced, that the M60 is quite inferior to the uh, T72. What I mean by that is that the T72 has better arm protection, it has a better gun, so it can, um, let's say, wait out the advance of the M60 and just uh, fight it on superior and higher ranges where the M60 has huge trouble actually engaging the T72 successfully. And on top of that, uh, the T72 is also faster. I think the only advantage the M60 actually has is that A, uh, it has better stabilizers, and B, what was it again? There were two, two things that the M60 did better than the T72. Let me quickly have a look. Um, it's also bigger than the T72. It's basically just uh, very, very inferior to the T72. I don't remember what the M60 had in terms of advantage over the T72. It's also much heavier, I think. I think it's, could it be the laser sights, the turret speed? Not sure. Something very minor, definitely. So the M60 is quite inferior to the T72. And in the first scenario, you only have these tanks. So 15 M60s and 13 T72s. In this scenario, both players get additional units. And that's mainly, I don't know if you can see this up here, this here. Yeah, you can barely see it, but it's still in the frame. Not sure if the resolution is high enough. Um, that's two M M150s, so very lightly armored track vehicles uh, that carry, uh, I think, eye toes or toes, which are quite capable ATGMs. Yeah, eye toes with quite good range and quite good penetration values. And you see spearheading this unit over here. Yeah, I think that's pretty much outside the... No. No, uh, that's uh, just in the frame. You can see some M113s, which are carrying the armed infantry. Now, this armed infantry platoon is equipped with one Dragon ATGM and a few laws. I think every squad carries a law. Two squads are counted as heavy mechanized infantry. They have a few, I guess, just a few um, better values when it comes to small arms fire. And we have. I mentioned the dragon per, we have one dragon per squad, not per squad, per, uh, per platoon. For the whole platoon, we have one dragon, that's what I'm trying to say. And that's pretty much it. That's the additional units we have in this second scenario. So one mech inf platoon with M113s, one dragon, and one law for every squad. And additionally, the M150, which is an ITO, let's say, tank destroyer, ITO equipped tank destroyer. Whew, take another sip. Okay. Basically, the same thing happens on the uh, Soviet side. We have now over here a motor rifle platoon equipped with BTR 70s. 
I have now compared the M113s to the BTR70s. I haven't gone into that much of detail now. Um, with three squads instead of four squads, as opposed to the Americans. But uh, similarly equipped, so every squad comes with an uh, RPG-22, which is the law uh, equivalent, and one squad comes with an Saxhorn, which is the dragon equivalent. And we have additionally a sort of a weapons platoon, which is now one part of the weapon platoon is now with the motor rifle platoon. Uh, there's equipped with a heavy machine gun, an NASV. And we have now with this tank platoon over here, uh, an anti-tank section, basically. So these guys are equipped with an ATGM launcher spigot and an SPG-9 anti-tank gun. The spigot is less capable than the ITO, uh, just to give you that, um, that comparison. Um, starting to shift the board around. We don't want that. We don't want that. Okay, so one reinforced company per player, basically a tank company reinforced with elements of mech inf company or a motor rifle company in, uh, respectively. Uh, with a bit of an extra here and there. And that's pretty much it. I also outlined the objectives, correct? Yeah, the bridges. And we get additionally uh, victory points for every unit we destroy on the other side. And obviously the T-72 is worth a few more victory points than the M-60. Let's talk about tactics and what I thought about that so far. Now I'm playing solitaire, you guys know that already. Um, what I thought I would do is I roll a die and see who would set up first. And then I set up this side first and made a plan for this side, which has been the US side in that case. And then I set up the other side reacting to uh, to my plan that I have with the, well, in that case, the US side. Now, first having a look at the US, let me just get you down from the lamp. I hope I can hook that in easily again once we're finished talking about, talking about that. So, I'm trying to have a look at my laptop. That screen is really small now. Let me see. No, that doesn't make much sense. Yeah, that, that should work. So we're working our way over from the left side on the US uh, edge and then uh, have a look at the right side over here, and we talk a bit about the uh, plan, the operations plan for the American company. So what I thought is uh, that I would put one, let's say, attacking force on one shoulder, and the other force that is supposed to sort of block the Soviets uh, from a few victory point locations on the other. And I thought this forest here, uh, this tree line, well, I'm doing really stupid things right now with the with the webcam. Um, this tree line right here would be a good position to provide covering fire onto the bridge that is in Victory Point location, and we are connected by road. So these units back here will actually um, start the offensive by moving by road and try to get as fast as they can into the village and setting up defensive positions there uh, with the Mechinf platoon. And then we see how we go from there on maybe making a turning movement or uh, seizing uh, this hill back here in the Soviet, um, in the, let's say, Soviet edge of the board and see how we go from there. And at least we would have one victory point location by then and, yeah, see how we would operate from there on. Um, on this side, on the right side, would have the blocking force that is meant to occupy the enemy forces as long as they can to fix the enemy forces at the other two victory point locations and create a favorable, um, let's say, jump off point for the other flanking units uh, to then make the turning movement uh, if that's what they want to do. So what I have here is uh, two tank platoons one uh, platoon consisting of four tanks, 
and the other platoon consisting of three, and an additional company HQ. We have two company HQ units uh, with the uh, Americans or on the American side, and that's a nice advantage over the Russians. And their job will be to get into this forest over here, this one, and then have a look or basically overwatch uh, the fort, which is back here. You see the double stream. Uh, the lower stream contains the fort hex and the center bridge. So that's what they are going to do. At the same time, in the center, the M150s over here would have a position at the beginning of the game on this hill in light cover and they will overwatch this gap, this big gap and road in between this big forest that is close to center bridge, let's call it center bridge forest and this hill back here where this ugly uh, tent is where the board is sort of linked. Okay, so that's sort of my idea. I haven't fiddled too much with the tactics in this whole thing. Uh, this is really meant to be a learning experience, and I hope this is just going to to sort of uh, fare well and bode well as good as it possibly can. Uh, so let's switch over to the Soviet side, which is uh, I don't want to want to have the shadow uh, still. There we go. So on this side, uh, which is now the side across from uh, the fort and the center bridge, sort of, I positioned two platoons of T-72s and one uh, company CO, the only company commander uh, the Soviets have, which means they will suffer from a few penalties. And we'll talk about that later in, well, later in the Let's Play. And their job will be to uh, try and dislodge the American tanks on this side by using this forest here, the big one again, as cover as cover against the M150s that we talked about a bit earlier, and then approach the first the fort, and then in a turning movement approach the center bridge and seize the center bridge. One platoon will serve as a support by fire unit, the other platoon will be the uh, the hero of the day and sees hopefully from the Soviet perspective the fort and maybe later on the um, the center bridge. On this side, we have quite a few forces more. The idea here is to create a blocking position because we have no road connection to the village bridge. So I assume the Americans are getting there earlier than we do. Um, the plan is now to reach this forest line. I really have to be careful with the light here. I just see a little screen of the recording on my laptop. Uh, to reach this uh, forest line with uh, the motor rifle platoon and the heavy MG and create a blocking position uh, against the US units that might appear from the village and uh, get into the turning movement. This tank platoon in the corner has basically the same job. They will move up the hill, the hill 7.11, I think, and uh, support this motor rifle platoon with additional fire. And their job will be in particular to overwatch the track that is leading from the village Echo 2, which is the village at the um, village bridge, uh, to the center of the um, of the map, basically. All right. Additionally. We have a T-72 platoon sitting in the back of the corner. They will get on top of the center hill, which is the hill T, um, not T, but 7.21. Hold on, I just have to click something. Well, there we go. This hill, 7.21. And from there, they will, probably from there or from the uh, foot of the hill, they will overwatch and support the attack on the uh, fort and the center bridge. So I'm assuming the Americans are going into this uh, forest, which is actually correct, or at least they will try to, and we will try and fix uh, them from the hill and from this hill on the left, from the center hill and the left hill, 7.18. The spigot and the anti-tank section, they're going up the hill and basically have the same plan uh, to support this tank platoon. 
Okay, that's uh, pretty much it for now. Uh, I hope you liked it so far. I think I will uh, cut this video off here. We talked about the general outlining, the plan, the scenario, the game, my background to the game, um, and my arm is getting tired of holding the webcam. So we have to figure out how we go about this. But I guess I will just hook it into the lamp again, my, into my kitchen lamp, and then, well, we're just going to start the game. So stay tuned. I hope you liked it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any comments, feel free to comment. Stay tuned. Take care.